IBM just reported a positive Q2 earnings. We're gonna look at their earnings report today, as well as recent news, their acquisitions, and where I think this company is headed. So if we look at their Q2 earnings release, we're gonna skip right down to the financial results here. As you can see, revenue increased, a modest increase, but nonetheless an increase. So cloud and cognitive software was up from about 5.7 billion to 6 billion, so about a $300 million increase. Every segment here was up in revenue, except for their system segment. But the one that I'm most focused on is this cloud and cognitive software, because if we go down here, you can see their cloud and cognitive software profit margin are 78%. So by far their most lucrative and highest profit margin part of the business. And their total profit margin comes in at a 48%. As you can see here, the gross profit was up from 8.7 billion to 9 billion. They were spending a little bit more money on research and development, which I think is great. I would like to see this number continue to increase. And um, you know, it can be a little difficult. We'll get to their debt in a second and their, their huge dividend payout. Now they do have a solid chunk of liabilities. As you can see here, total liabilities coming in at 124 billion. However, it is down pretty significantly, down 11 billion. So it's, it's heading in the right direction. They're paying down this long-term debt, which is now around 48 billion from 54 billion. So it is good to see here that even though these are modest increases, you gotta think about, they are simultaneously making acquisitions, paying down their debt, and paying this massive dividend. So it's impressive to see that they're able to balance all three. Now you're probably wondering what my fascination is with IBM, and why I think it's such a big deal, since you probably never hear anybody talk about this besides maybe your grandpa, he might own some IBM stock, why is this 24 year old like IBM stock so much? There's a few reasons why. So as you can see here, they spent $1.7 billion on acquisitions and we'll talk about uh, what those acquisitions were in a minute. Now they paid out nearly $1.5 billion in dividends. So if you apply this over the four quarters of the year, we're talking about $6 billion in dividend payments alone. It'll be interesting to see what happens when the company completes a spinoff later this year and if they will keep up this dividend because let's just say that they cut this dividend, right? Of that $48 billion in long-term debt that they have, if they cut the dividend entirely, that means they're saving $6 billion a year. So over the next four years, if they were to use that dividend money alone, they could pay down this debt by half because six billion over four years, that's $24 billion we're talking about. So just from that alone, they could cut their, their debt in half. So it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do with the dividend. I do like their dividend and I hope they do keep it, but if it'll help the company grow, pay down that debt in the short term, they could always get back to paying the dividend later. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Now, why do I like IBM so much? I think this company is a sleeping giant. It largely missed out on the bull run of the last 10 years. As you can see here, from 2010 onward, it's actually down from 170 to where it is now, around 140, while its competitors, the last likes of you know, Microsoft, Amazon, Google have gone way ahead and doubled or more in their value. I think there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes with IBM that people don't necessarily think or talk about. For example, in 2020 alone, IBM received 9,130 US patents the most of any company marking 28 consecutive years of IBM patent leadership. So there's a lot of stuff going on with this company that isn't as exciting or front page news like with Amazon and Microsoft necessarily, but it should not be overlooked. Now I also think a major issue, I've talked about this in you know past videos I've done on IBM, you can check those out on the channel. This company was run by MBAs. The last CEO was business oriented and not an engineer, as opposed to the current CEO, Arvind Krishna, who I think is really starting to turn things around here, and it's a big ship to turn around. It's not gonna happen overnight. Now, let's look at some other recent news. IBM recently unveiled the world's first two nanometer chip technology, opening a new front for semiconductors. I'm sure if you've been watching the news, you know how critical semiconductors are to so many things from cars, to our communication devices, to appliances. So this two nanometer chip is projected to achieve 45% higher performance or 75% lower energy use than today's most advanced seven nanometer chips. And here are some potential benefits of this. Quadrupling cell phone battery life, slashing carbon footprint, speeding up laptops functions, and so on. So IBM, again, this is a company that's at the forefront of innovation. You can't sleep on this company. Now with that being said, IBM is definitely not without its issues. This is a company that people complain that is, you know, kind of historically been run from the top down and it's kind of bureaucratic as opposed to more innovative companies. That's one of the reasons why they've been able to get ahead. I would hope that the IBM culture will change to meet the times and meet the demand, especially now with new leadership, with an engineer at the forefront who's very involved with cloud and AI and kind of sees 
I think, where the bigger picture, where everything is heading with the world and positioning IBM accordingly. Now, looking at some of their other acquisitions, they just acquired Blue Tab to expand data and hybrid cloud consulting services in Europe and Latin America. So that's great to see, getting involved internationally. They also acquired Boxboat Technologies, a premier hybrid cloud consulting firm. So that fits. Good to see that these, these aren't just diversifications, as Peter Lynch liked to say, but this relates to their core focus here because they're very focused on this hybrid cloud initiative. So now some less positive news. Jim Whitehurst suddenly exited IBM as president, and he was the former CEO of Red Hat. Here's from an anonymous source. Part of the Red Hat organization you're reeling right now. This raises Red Hat issues. The difference between the two companies is culture. The Red Hat culture is more open. They work from the bottom up. The IBM culture is top down. There's definitely going to be a perception in the field with Jim's departure that something is going on with IBM and Red Hat. So this is definitely something to keep tabs on and I'll be interested to see if Jim Whitehurst says anything or why he left, if there were issues with, did he clash with IBM? So this is definitely something to keep tabs on. So this is definitely a, obviously a company that is not without issues. As we said, they have a ton of debt, although it is going in the right direction. They're paying it down while making these acquisitions, while paying out that dividend. So I think IBM is on the right track and I am excited for where it can go in the future and as you can see got a pretty low PE ratio right now coming in around 24 compared to its peers which are significantly higher so I like IBM here I think that this is a company that's healing I like that they're heading in the right direction they pay this huge dividend and they are growing revenue slowly so let me know what you think of IBM in the comments below would you buy IBM stock why or why not this is Vinny from the investment club and I'll see you next time